Father God. Father, we've come this morning to give glory and honor to you, to thank you for your goodness, to thank you for your precious Son, Jesus, who died for every single one of us, that we could go free of sickness and disease, that we could go free of all bondage in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we want to give you of our very best this morning, Father God, and we just thank you, Lord, that you will open the blind eyes, make the lame walk, the deaf to hear, Father. Those that are oppressed, Father God, that they will be uh, uh, delivered, Father God. Those that need healing, Father God, that they, uh, you will heal them, Father God. We just thank you, Lord, for signs and wonders, Father God, your miracles, Father, in this place this morning, Father. Father, we do not limit your greatness, your power, Father God. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. We want to welcome every precious person listening to us this morning. We want you to really uh, uh, stay with us and listen to the word of God this morning and, and just receive just receive into your heart the word of God. Amen. Amen. I just want to read to you um, Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of your glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of your power of your awesome works. I will proclaim your great deeds. They will, they will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise your Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of your glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know that you're, uh, of your mighty acts and of your glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all His promises and loving toward all He has made. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of the Lord look to you, and you give them the food at the proper time. You open their hand, you open your hand and satisfy the desires every of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all His ways and loving towards all He has made. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, and all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears a cry and He saves them. The Lord watches over all who love Him, but all the wicked He will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise His holy name forever yes, and ever. Amen, Father, amen. we've come into Thank this you, place. Lord. We've come into your sanctuary to praise you, and Jesus. give you glory and honor. Father, you are worthy, worthy, worthy Hallelujah. to be praised. Father God. We thank you, Father, Hallelujah. for what you're about to do in this place Thank this morning, Jesus. Father God. We thank you, Lord. We come with expectant, hungry hearts Amen. to hear your word this morning, Amen. Father. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We invite your precious Holy Spirit thank to have full control over the service this morning, Father God. That every precious person will hear your, your word this morning. And they'll get excited again, Father God. They will be healed and restored and renewed in their minds, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you glory and honor. And Satan, I bind up every foul devil demon spirit, every hindering demonic devil demon spirit. I bind you up and cast you out of this place in Jesus' mighty name. You will not hinder or harass God's people in any way, form, or shape in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
together to worship you there's no God like you Lord there's nothing we'd rather do on a on a uh, Sunday morning Lord than to worship you and for that matter any time yes, in our lives in Jesus name any time in our lives in the name of Jesus praise God I woke up this morning at just after three and I just started to worship the Lord there's no restriction on God there's no time restriction on him in any way. Father God, we thank you this church will be full in the name of Jesus. 
You said it, we believe it, and we wait for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, with anticipation and excitement. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And let us not lose sight of the vision of a full church, a light shining in the darkness for the people of Kempton Park. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. And so, Lord, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Lord, that you meet us right here in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you have your way today in the name of Jesus. It's your service. We're just your servants. We're just your ministers. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, today I want to talk to you about an encounter with Jesus. I want to tell you what I heard a TV preacher say recently, whether you agree with it or not. And he said that unless you've had a personal encounter with Jesus, you're not born again. Unless you've had a personal encounter with Jesus, you're not born again. I'm going to show you, read to you, and show you a few um, illustrations of different people that uh, had encounters with Jesus in the Bible. I was a bit troubled with this when I heard it, because I think sometimes we think that for it to be an encounter with Jesus, a true encounter with Jesus, it must be something dramatic and dynamic, and yet sometimes it can be a slow gentle encounter with Jesus. But by the time I'm finished, I hope if you've already had an encounter that you realize it or that you realize you're going through an encounter with Jesus. And our desire should be, our heart's desire should be that every day is an encounter with Jesus. But it's up to us. It's up to us. We've got to position ourselves to encounter Jesus, we've got to desire that encounter with Jesus. We've got to reach out to Jesus for that encounter. God says, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. The Bible tells us that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. An encounter with Jesus is when you meet Jesus but with impact. I can meet different people all day long. And maybe it's business, maybe it's ministry, whatever it is. I can meet them all day long and go home and not think much about it. And then there's always those times when you meet somebody and they stick in your mind, you remember them. There was something different about them. You had an encounter with them. But how deep is your encounter with Jesus? How deep is your Turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 9. Now, the Apostle Paul, his name was Saul before he had his encounter with the Lord Jesus. And he persecuted Christians. We'll read from verse 1. It says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way. If you were a follower of Jesus in those days, they said you were a follower of the way. Remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Who were, who, who were of the way. Whether men or women, he might bring them bound, tied up, handcuffed in chains to Jerusalem, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. I don't know if you can see it. A light shone around him from heaven. And he fell to the ground. And he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. 
It is hard for you to kick against the goats. What literally that means is pricks. Something's pricking you all the time. It's hard for you to kick against whatever is pricking you. And this is going to prick you big time. <laughs> so Paul, or Saul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but they saw no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by hand, in other words, he was blind, the light had blinded him. But they led him by hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. It was a very straight street. No, no beds. <laughs> Arise and go to the street called Straight. <laughs> and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And a vision, and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias, that's you, coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight again. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. Remember, Saul was persecuting the saints, the Christians the followers of the way. Verse 14, And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, for he is, he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my sake. Now for the sake of time, Ananias went there. Saul received him. Ananias laid his hands on his eyes. He received his sight back. And God changed his name from Saul to Paul. God was, at the, God was in the habit of changing names. Abram became Abraham. And so on and so on and so on. And God uses people not for their abilities not for their past records. I mean, look at David. David was an adulterer and a murderer. And there's so many people in the Bible that, uh, that God used that have bad backgrounds. What God is always looking for is a willing heart to serve him. What God is looking for is a vessel that he can pour his anointing out on. What God is looking for is somebody who wants an encounter and to dedicate and commit their life solely and totally to the Lord Jesus. I really believe this message is for somebody that's watching this today, whether it's here in the service or whether you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook. Somebody is watching this today and God is speaking to you and he's going to speak to you through this message. This was Paul's encounter. This was an encounter that Paul had. When he collapsed to the ground and there was a light from heaven shining all around him. Paul knew who it was. And he said, Lord, Lord, who are you? And then he said to him, Lord, what do you want me to do? That was the impact of the encounter that Paul had with Jesus. But it's true that the more encounters you have with Jesus, the deeper the relationship you, you will have with him. The more encounters you have, the deeper your relationship will become in Jesus' name. It's the same with anything in the world today. The more you get involved with a person in relationship, whether it's a friend, whether it's a colleague, or whether it's somebody you eventually marry, whatever it is, what will happen is you will get to know them more and more the more encounters 
you have with them. Or you can be like Peter. Do you remember Peter? Peter was the one who wanted to fight the centurion when they came to arrest Jesus and cut his ear off. And uh, he was, uh, according to history, I read this, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but he used to swear a lot. <laughs> and uh, he had to learn to control his tongue and all this. And he was always uh, protective of Jesus. When Jesus told them that he had to go to Jerusalem and be crucified, and Peter said, no, Lord, I won't let this happen to you. And Jesus turned to him and said, I rebuke you, Satan, for your ways are not the ways of my father, but of the world. And Jesus, I mean, he, rebu he rebuked Peter. But Peter loved Jesus. And Peter was the first person that Jesus asked for when he was resurrected and he appeared again. He said, where is Peter? But when Jesus got arrested, Jesus had already told him, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And when Jesus was arrested and he was being led away, they said to him, aren't you one of his followers? And he said, no, I'm not. Three times. And the Bible says he followed and watched them from a distance. Now you can be a Christian just like that, in that frame of mind like Peter had then. And you can watch Jesus from a distance. You can watch him from a distance and you can have a distant relationship. It amazes me that some Christians... I'm, I'm the same, I suppose, but a lot of Christians wonder, well, does God hear my prayers? Well, in some of the cases, it's because they're watching God from a distance. And you need to come in close to Him. He says, draw close to me and I will draw close to you. Or you can be like Mary. Remember Mary in the Gospel of Luke. And Jesus went into the house and Mary sat at His feet and Martha was in the kitchen preparing the food. And Martha got fed up and complained about it. And Jesus said, but what Mary is doing is good. He said it was a good thing. And Mary sat at his feet. She left everything. She wasn't concerned about the things, the chores that had to be done. She wasn't concerned about that. She wanted to take this opportunity of having this impact, having this encounter with Jesus. She wanted to have this encounter. She wanted to sit at his feet and she wanted to make the most of this encounter and take in everything that he had to say. She wanted to have an intimate relationship with him. An intimate means a close, involved relationship with him. Is that you this morning? You've got the two choices. It's all about your heart, your heart attitude, and the truth about what your heart wants. Let's have a look at another encounter. Let's go to John chapter 13. There's many encounters. I've chosen but a few. There's loads and loads and loads. Read your Bible. Read all about the different encounters people had with Jesus. John chapter 13. It's not John chapter 13. There we are. John chapter 18. John chapter 18. And I'm going to read to you. Peter has just denied Jesus when they said, aren't you a follower of his? And uh, Peter followed from a distance. And then it says in verse 29, Pilate then went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? And the crowds, they answered and they said to him, if he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. They took Jesus to Pilate. Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. Therefore the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. 
that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he would die, because the Romans crucified. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, and called Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to, this, to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews, and he said to them, I find no fault in him at all. Pilate had this encounter with Jesus and when he had this encounter, he heard all about Jesus. He heard the Jews complaining about Jesus. He heard the Jews complaining about Jesus, proclaiming he was a king. He heard they thought Jesus was a blasphemer. I believe most of those Jewish leaders in their deep heart, they knew exactly who Jesus was, that he was the Messiah. And I believe today, if Jesus was to come back, a lot of churches were persecuted him over again. The churches that are devoid of the Spirit, the churches that don't allow the Holy Spirit to discern the spirits, they don't allow the Holy Spirit to bring revelation to them. Pilate had an encounter with Jesus. And as a result of that encounter, he could find no fault with him. It's true, the Jews crucified him. They had this custom in those days that the Romans would bring a, a, a person out who had committed a crime and they would ask the, the, the people there, who do they want to be crucified at this particular time of the Passover? And when Pilate brought Jesus out onto the balcony, he said, I find no fault in him. In verse 39, he says, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? He's calling him the king of the Jews. He can find no fault in him. Then they all cried out again, saying, not this man, but Barabbas. And Barabbas was a robber. They wanted Barabbas to be set free to them and Jesus to be crucified. I can tell you now, after the crucifixion of Jesus, Pilate couldn't sleep at night. He couldn't deal with himself. Why? Because he'd had this encounter with Jesus. Let's go in our Bibles to Luke chapter 23. And here we see a very powerful encounter with Jesus. And hopefully it's an encounter maybe similar to what any one of us may have had. Luke chapter 23 and verse 39. Jesus has been put on the cross. The soldiers have been mocking him. He's hanging on the cross. His body is racked with pain. It's excruciating pain. And they put a sign over the top of his head saying this is the king of the Jews. And then we pick it up in verse 39. It says then one of the criminals, Jesus was on the cross, and the Bible tells us that on either side of him were two thieves, one thief and another thief, also being crucified for their crimes. 
Verse 39 says, Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other thief, answering, rebuked the first thief, saying, Don't you even fear God after all this happening to you? Don't you fear God? You're going to die. Don't you fear God? You're under the same condemnation as he is. Jesus was only under condemnation because he was carrying our condemnation. Verse 41. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our crimes. But this man, he's done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, he's been hanging there on the cross, having this encounter with Jesus. He hasn't spoken a word prior to all this. But he's been watching how Jesus has been mocked. He saw how Jesus was beaten. He saw the state of Jesus when they nailed him to the cross and they pushed the cross up, stood the cross up with Jesus hanging on it. And then they spat at him and they mocked him and they threw stones at him. This thief, he saw all this. Maybe he even heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Listen to what Jesus said. This guy's had the right encounter. This guy over here had a bad encounter. He was devoid of the spirit. He couldn't think. He just thought of himself the whole time. He didn't make the most of a perfect encounter that could bring him salvation, that could bring him everlasting life. And instead, he went direct into the flames of hell. Yes, the flames of hell. And he spends eternity in there. But Jesus said to the other one, the one that recognized there was something about this Jesus. And he asked Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The moment your heart stops beating, the moment you stop breathing, and your spirit and your soul leave your body, Immediately, you go into paradise. And that's the fate, which was a good fate, of this thief. Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you, today, not one minute later, but today, you will be with me in paradise. What an awesome encounter. You have met the living God. All of you sat here, all of you watching on the video, you have met the living God. You've had an encounter with Him and you are assured that if you were to breathe, stop breathing today, if you were to die in this body today, you would be with Jesus in paradise. What an encounter with Jesus to be destined to paradise. Bible tells us that even the demons know who Jesus is. That they tremble at his name. Let's go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And let's see another encounter. The third encounter of another kind. <laughs> Mark chapter 5 verse 1. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him, this is Jesus, there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, a man who had demons, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him, not even with chains. You know, when a person is possessed by devil, the, the, by the devil, they can become so strong. I remember when I was a policeman, if you arrested somebody who was resisting and they fought and the adrenaline was uh, flowing in them and they were resisting because they didn't want to lose their freedom. Sometimes it could take seven, or six or seven policemen to hold them down. 
And when a man is possessed with demons, even chains can't hold him down sometimes. But there's one thing that can always hold a demon down, and that is the powerful name of Jesus, Amen. which is stronger than any chain in Jesus' name. Verse 4, because he had been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always at night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, catch this. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. He's a man who's got a demon controlling him. Who's broken chains, who's broken shackles. Nobody could tame him. He was crying out day and night, making terrible cries and noises amongst the tombs in the, in, in, where they buried the people. And then he sees Jesus, but he runs and he worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. It was not the guy that was speaking. It was the demon that was speaking. Yes. And Jesus said to him, Come out of this man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And the demon said, my name is Legion, because we are many. This guy was possessed by many, many, many demons. Don't always think it's one demon. Yeah. Give me many demons. That's right. I've seen the power of one demon. We went once to witness to a guy and to speak to him yeah. and his wife. And, 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 and Lee and the wife were in the kitchen. And this guy told me about Jesus bringing him a cup of tea at night. And I, I, and I started to tell him that it wasn't Jesus, it was a demon. I had discerned a demon, a familiar spirit, they call it. And he stared at me, he glared at me with hate in his eyes. And I could see he wanted to get up out of his, the seat. And the Spirit of the living God told me to pray in the Holy Spirit. And I started to pray in tongues and he relaxed and he sat back. And every time I could feel him tensing up, I would start in tongues again. And he would sit back and he relaxed. Cut the long story short, we heard the next day after we had left them and gone home, he completely smashed his home up. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine, pigs, were feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged Jesus saying, send us to the pigs that we may enter them. You see, a demon has to have a body. It has to have a body to dwell in. It has to have a body to manifest itself in. If it hasn't got a body, it's tormented. It goes through arid places looking for a place to call home. And there they knew Jesus, they knew the power of Jesus, they knew the authority of Jesus, they knew Jesus was about to cast them out of this man, to set this man free, and they pleaded with Jesus, and they begged him, saying, send us into the pigs, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission, then the unclean spirits went out and entered into the pigs. Now listen to what it says, there were about 2,000 And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So they all got drowned anyway. <laughs> so the demons had an encounter with Jesus and they pleaded with him. They pleaded with him. And they had to submit to his authority. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. And let's read about an encounter of somebody who knew Jesus intimately before he was cast out of he heaven. He was an archangel. He knew Jesus very well. He was an archangel, and the Bible tells us he was very good looking. He was so anointed, he had pipe, pipes in his, 
and his wings for music to play. And that's why a lot of them say that he was the praise and worship leader in heaven. <laughs> his name was Lucifer. And he was an archangel. And Jesus said, I saw him fall from heaven when he was cast out. The devil had an encounter with Jesus. When he had an encounter with Jesus, he was defeated. Matthew chapter 4, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be turned to bread. And Jesus answered him and said, It is written. That's how you deal with the devil. Find out what the word says, where he's tormenting you, where he's tempting you, where he's trying to mess with you. Find out what the word says about it, so that you can turn to the devil, and you, just like Jesus, you can say, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of of God. Then the devil took Jesus into the holy city. Do you see how the devil is able to move Jesus around and take him here and take him there? Let's read further. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down because it's written. He now he tries to come back to G with Jesus with the same way. It is written. He shall give his angels charge over you. And it says, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. But Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up. Catch all these things. The devil took him up. The devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And catch this. All the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And the devil said to Jesus, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. You see, the devil is the God of the world. Adam and Eve gave the devil all authority on this earth. And Jesus came to destroy the works of the evil one. And he gave us the power and authority Amen. to occupy until Jesus came back to enforce the defeat of the devil. And he told him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to, G to Satan, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. So three times he was tempted here. And three times Jesus dealt with him with the word of God. It is written. And verse 11 says, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to Jesus. The devil had an encounter with Jesus. And the devil was defeated. The Bible tells us if he had known what was going to happen when he had Jesus crucified, he would never have crucified him. That's what the Bible says. You see, the devil, he's a liar, he's a thief, he's a deceiver, he lies to himself, he deceives himself, and he stole the eternity that he had when he was in heaven. He stole away from that, and he is now doomed. For eternity. He still thinks he's going to win. He still thinks he's going to be God of this world. He still thinks that everybody's going to bow down and worship him. When we do end time prophecies or whatever. You're going to hear about the Antichrist. How everybody believes that he was the Christ. He was the Messiah. And now everybody bows down to worship him. How he's even raised back up from the dead to life. How, how people can, and the Bible says, even the elect may be deceived by it. You see, we have to understand. We need to have this encounter with Jesus. We need to have many encounters with Jesus. We need to have, be like Mary and have intimate encounters with Jesus. The devil had this encounter trying to usurp, trying to use his authority that Adam had given him. Because Adam had all authority. God had told Adam to, to, to take care of everything. 
And instead, Adam submitted to the devil when he came to tempt him. And because of that action, he gave him the authority. He gave him the entrance into this world. Let's go to John chapter 4 and have a look at a nice, lovely encounter. I'm just reading you a few, and yet there's so many here. But let's go to John chapter 4. We're nearly finished. John chapter 4. You see, we're quick to judge people. Oh, he's queer. Or he's gay. Yeah. True. Well, you know what? That guy's been messing about with this other woman for years and years. And his poor wife, she sits at home waiting for him to come out after he's been out entertaining this other woman. And then he calls himself a believer. We're so quick to judge others. And I'm not saying that that is right. Of course it's not right. But the point that I'm trying to make is this. When you have an encounter with Jesus, your past, the things that you've done bad, the things that you've done against God, the things that we that are called sin that was in your life, it will come to the fourth, to the fore. Can I tell you why? Because Jesus is the light and the light exposes the darkness. And here we read about an adulteress and she had an encounter with Jesus. Let's read in John chapter 4. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made uh, uh, had baptized more disciples. Let's go down further. They, uh, verse 5. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary, tired from his journey, sat, thus by, sat uh, beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. And a woman of Samaria, the Jews had nothing to do with the people from Samaria. They saw, thought, saw them as dogs. They weren't allowed to talk to them or associate with them. Now the disciples had left Jesus because he was tired and he wanted to rest. He wanted to pray and he sent them into the town to get provisions. So they had all gone. He was on his own by Jacob's well and along comes this Samaritan woman. Verse 9, and the woman of Samaria said to Jesus, sorry. Let's back up a bit. Verse 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to Jesus, How is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. Then Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. There the woman said to him, said to Jesus, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons? And his livestock, and Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. Now catch this. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You have said, Well, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. You speak the truth. She was an adulteress. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet, our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know, but we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. We know what we worship. Make no mistake, she's about to find it out. Verse 23, 
But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Get an encounter with Jesus. God is seeking for those who will worship Him. Verse 24. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Jesus, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all these things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And she said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And the woman, she left her water pot there, and she went into the city, and she said to the men there, come and see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? You see, the adulteress, she had an encounter with Jesus. He told her all about her, herself. And then her eyes were open as to who he was. The Messiah. The Messiah. we got two more to go. Let's quickly go to John chapter 3. Nearly finished. John chapter 3. Probably the first scripture you read after you became born again. John chapter 3 verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you have an encounter with Jesus, you will be born again. Make no mistake about it. Verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? And Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water, that's natural birth, and the spirit, a spiritual birth, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So do not marvel or wonder that I say to you, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. Here, this man, his name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus. And he had an encounter with Jesus at midnight because he didn't want to be seen. And he received the truth. From Jesus, the man called Nicodemus of the ru ruling Jewish council. I found it strange when I first became born again. You know, we came out of the Catholic Church. Before we got excommunicated, we were part of the Catholic Charismatic. And there was a priest called Father John Bertolucci. And, uh, uh, and he gives a testimony. He was already a priest in the Catholic Church. And then he had an encounter with Jesus. After many years of being a priest, he had an encounter with Jesus, and he became born again. And I couldn't believe this. And I thought, but he was a priest. He was a man of the cloth. He was a man of the church, a leader in the church, a preacher in the church. But many years after this, he had an encounter with Jesus and became born again. You see, it doesn't matter... Whether you sit in the church every Sunday, it doesn't matter whether you read your Bible and fall asleep after the second verse once in a while. You have to have an encounter with Jesus before you will be born again. Here we see in Luke chapter 19, verse 1, Then Jesus said to Pastor Jericho, Now behold, there was a man there called Zac 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 Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd. And he was short. He was short. So he ran ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to put, for Jesus was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and he said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down quickly. Because today I'm coming to stay at your house. So Zacchaeus, he came down quickly and he received Jesus joyfully he had an encounter with Jesus and he received Jesus joyfully hallelujah in Jesus name 
Let me just share you now, I'll share with you from the Bible. Let me just share with you quickly a couple of my encounters. I can't go into too much detail for the sake of time. But I had an accident in the car, my wife was with me, and they were building a main road over here. Unless you live in this area, you wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. And I turned on the one side, they were still laying the tar, the other side was open, and I turned, I had the brand new car, I hadn't even done a thousand kilometers in it, and I turned out into this road, and there was a lady parked there, and as I was passing her, she suddenly did a U-turn, and she clipped the back of the car, and my car went off the road, through the pylons, onto the other side, where it was just dirt, where they were going to lay the tar, and the car was spinning. And all the time, I kept hearing the Lord saying to me, Break! Release! Break! Release! All the time. And I brought that car to a stop. There were people from the same office where I worked at in a car behind me and they could not believe I controlled the car and brought it to a stop. But it was because of God speaking through the Holy Spirit in me. I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter that saved me and saved my wife from injury or even death. Another time, we had intruders on more than one occasion. Uh, the, the, we had intruders coming to the house. My wife stood on the bed and said, Get out in the name of Jesus. And Jesus was there with us. And they left and they never stole one thing except for a remote. Another time, they came into another house where we lived. And there were six of them and they had guns and they had knives. And the name of Jesus saved us again. He was here. We had another encounter with Jesus. And they had an encounter with Jesus, but they never realized it. Another time, a man was laying on the ground in the church service. The church service had finished. The, his relatives came crying. They said, he's died, he's dead. And we went down and we raised him up again in Jesus' name. Amen. We had an encounter with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And many times we prayed for people that the doctors had said were going to die, and they lived. Amen. They lived. Another time I was having a quiet time and I saw I'd just become born again. I was lying on the bed with my wife and, uh, and, and, I, and I was praying and I looked up and I saw this bright light far, far away. And it, it was a light and it looked like it was on top of a throne or something like that. And when I shared it with the priest and he said to me, you're blessed to see things like that. Little did he understand. I had an encounter with Jesus. Another time I was having a quiet time. I've been writing some praise and worship songs. And I put my guitar down. I just felt this heaviness that I had to intercede for somebody. And I started praying in tongues. And eventually I was on the ground. I was crying. And I was praying in tongues. Lying on the floor. And I felt somebody come and walk in. And stand next to me. And I wanted to look. And I couldn't look. Something stopped me from looking. And a voice said, nobody has seen my face. And lived. That's just encounters. Many, many more encounters we have had. And I don't have time to share them with you today. I could have gone into much more detail even with these. But the question today is, have you had, have you had an encounter with Jesus? Amen. You see, your encounter is your testimony. We overcome the devil by the power of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. My testimony starts... Stars probably much like yours. With Jesus knocking on the door of my heart. Just watch the dog. <laughs> With Jesus knocking on the door of my heart. And that's the initial encounter. That's the initial encounter. You've been listening to me this morning. And Jesus has been knocking on the door of your heart. He's been knocking and knocking. Now let me tell you something. The choice is now left to you. Whether you open the door of your heart. And whether you let him in or not. That's your choice. Then you let him in. And you have a choice of whether you're going to grow. In this intimate relationship with Jesus. You see, maybe you've been growing up in the church and you feel that you haven't really had this big major encounter with the Lord, but maybe it's been a gradual thing and you've been getting to know more about Jesus and you've been desiring more of Jesus. You see, it's all about heart attitude and the things that you desire. You see, in this world, this world can be a wicked place. It can be a beautiful place, but it can be a wicked place. And in this world, 
the things of the world you might desire, but those things will not give you eternal life. And those things can drag you down into the pits of hell because it can rob you of an intimate relationship with Jesus. He says in the word there, he says, you can come to me and say, I've laid hands on the sick. You can come and say, I prophesy, but I will say to you, away from me, you evil doer, I did not know you. Jesus has to know you, and he will only know you by you having encounters on a daily basis with him, with you having intimate relationship with Jesus. So the knocking on the door of the heart is the initial encounter which starts a lifetime of devotion, but it's up to you. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's all up to you. God says, I've set before you blessing and cursing, life and death. Choose life, he says. He gives us a clue. Choose life. But he says the choice is yours. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If anybody opens the door of their heart, I'll come in and I'll have communion with you. I'll sup with you. I'll remain with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And in Romans chapter 10 it says, All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We need to be calling on him daily, having these encounters, building this intimate relationship. But God is not going to force you. And it's going to be no good. It's going to be no good when you've braved your breath. And all of a sudden you see the angel of death taking you off into the pits of hell. You will cry out to the Lord for sure then. You will cry out to the Lord for sure then, but it will be too late. The Bible says it's on this earth. It's the time to make the right choice. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Choose wisely. Choose correctly. The worst decision you can make in this life is to ignore the Messiah. To ignore the Christ. To ignore Jesus because tonight you fool your soul may be required of you if that's you this morning and you felt Jesus knocking on the door of your heart and you want to, you realize you need to make a commitment if there's anybody here in this church service today and you feel you need to make an encounter doesn't matter how young you are doesn't matter how old you are God is not a respecter of persons he wants you in heaven. God would have it that all men be saved. But he gives us the choice. And if you've chosen today that you want to know Jesus more intimately, that you want to have more encounters with him, that you want to, that you want to have him in your life so you can have those encounters, then just close your eyes and just say this prayer with me. Just say, Father... I believe you are God. And I believe Jesus is your son. And I believe he's the way to you. And I believe he's knocking on the door of my heart this morning. And I invite Jesus into my life. Jesus, I'm calling on you. Save me. I lay down my life to have that personal encounter with you. And the full assurance. And I'm born again, and that I am saved in Jesus' mighty name. God, we bring the sick before you. We bring the needy before you, Father God. We bring every precious person yes. that needs a touch this morning, Father, yes. from your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you heal and restore them to their rightful state. Father God, we just pray for the Murray Stanfields, Karaskis. Father, all the families that, uh, the, that come to the church, Father, we pray for every single one of them, Ina and, and Cliff and, and uh, uh, Chris Thanks. and Anneli, Father, every single one of them, Father God, we pray for them, Lord, we just thank you, Father God, that you know their needs, Father, according to your riches, you will bless them, Father, you will supply their needs, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are their shepherd, they shall not lack in any area of their lives. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for jobs that, uh, that need, to, uh, people that need jobs, Father. People that need peace in their hearts and healing, uh, restoration, Father God. 
We bring every precious person that's in bereavement today, Father. We pray your Holy Spirit heal and restore their broken hearts, Father God. Just minister to every single one of them, Holy Spirit. We pray for that right now. Give them peace in their hearts, Father. And just tell them, Father, it's not the beginning. It's not the end. It's only the beginning for them, Father God. And they will see their loved ones again one day, Father God. We just thank you for that right now. We thank you, Lord, for divine alignment, divine intervention, supernatural wealth transfer, supernatural death cancellations. In Jesus' mighty name, and Satan, I cancel and destroy every assignment against God's people. In Jesus' name, you will not hinder or harass any of them in any way, form, or shape. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that the blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it, Father. We thank you, Father. It's good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men pour into our bosom. We expect a hundredfold return in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for that right now. Amen. Amen. And we pray, family, friends, relatives, beloved, those that are listening to us, we pray that you have a blessed week and we know that God's going to come through for you. Every single one of you that I'm crying out to today, God's going to come through for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Trust Him and see He will not fail you. He will restore you. He will heal you. He'll give you peace. He'll open doors for you that you did not think you uh, He would open and He would close doors that you think He, he should have kept open. He will close those to keep you uh, protected in Jesus' mighty name. But the Lord bless and keep you. Make His face shine upon you. Be, gra uh, be gracious to give you peace in Jesus mighty name and we pray family friends relatives beloved that you'll have a blessed week ahead and expect God's uh, uh, God's blessing to come through for you in Jesus mighty name amen 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 so you will your separate ways expect that encounter with Jesus our Lord our master until the next time God bless you for you alone